So again, back in the late 70s, I was teaching class out of my garage already, and my very first student, Richard, was absolutely in love with the art. He sometimes would call me at 10 o'clock at night, oh, I need a class right now. I said, come on by, Richard. He was my only student, so I'll teach the class anytime you want. One day he comes up to me and says, listen, you have no idea what happened. I had scheduled a fight for you. I said, really? What are you talking about? Well, I went into this martial arts school, and I told the teacher that, you know, his kickboxing stuff was good, but I bet my money on you. And I eventually got to half an argument with me, and he agreed to bet a thousand bucks. I said, Richard, you can't go to people's martial arts school and challenge the teacher. That's not right. Well, I did this, but he agreed to do it. And of course, I was, you know, needing money at the time. I said, gosh, don't do that again. But since you already agreed, he agreed to do it. Let's make it happen. Go back and schedule a time. So Richard goes back and schedule, you know, a time for us to do this, this challenge match. Except that when he came back, he went back to the school, the instructor had changed his mind, didn't want to do it anymore. However, the instructor's master was there and said, listen, I don't want to bet any money, but if you want to bring the jiu-jitsu guy to my school, I'll spar with him. Be glad to. Richard said, okay, let's do it. And when he finds out, the guy's name was Benny the Jet Urquidez, kickboxing champ, one of the most amazing fighters of all time. And when Richard found out, he went crazy. He came back home and said, oh, you have no idea. The guy said that he wants to spar with you. He's been the jet. The mind's incredible. I never heard of him in my life. So I said, okay, well, let's do it. I got his card here for him to call him up. So I called him up and said, listen, let's get a, schedule you know, a match. And this. I said, yeah, let's do it. Who are you going to bring with you, he said. I said, oh, I'm bringing you know, my girlfriend, me, my buddy Richard, and his mother. You know, the old lady's going to drive the car. He said, okay, you're bringing the press and media. I said, no, nobody. Okay, come back. See you next week. So I scheduled time to go meet the guy at the West Folly YMCA. That's what it is. he taught classes. He taught class in a basketball court. So when I get there, I go to see you. He said, then let's warm up. And I change into my kimono, and now we're ready to go, right? And he asks me, do you want to spar on hardwood floor, or do you want to spar on the mats? And I ask him, do you want to land on hardwood floor, or do you want to land on the mats? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like that. He said, well, let's, land on, let's work on the mats. I said, great. So we brought some mats, set up the mats on the ground, and we got ready and squared off. He said, I'm going to go half speed, he said to me. I said, don't do that. Go full on. I had no idea who the guy was, so that you don't regret it. Great. So he squares off, and we go in, and when we should go at it, I get into a clinch, take him to the ground, and again, and again. Every time I take him to the ground, I end up mounted on top of him, and he kind of frustrates, let's do it again. He gets up again. And again, and again, we did 10 times. Every single time I get in the clinch, take him to the ground over and over and over. Eventually he says to me, yeah, you're very good at this. I said, wait a minute, it's not me, it's what I know. Jiu Jitsu is very good, it's not, I'm just another guy. In fact, if you have a student who's got about 40 classes, we can have him spar with Richard. And he calls this guy. Obviously, you know, a huge, strong guy, about 190 pounds, solid muscle, stocky, short but stocky, and Richard is about 135 pounds soaking wet. Very skinny little guy. So the guy comes up and I say, Richard, you're going to spar with him. Dude, what are you talking about? I said, listen, just like we do with me in the garage, protect your face, rush in and take the guy to the ground. Sure enough, they square off, Richard rushes into the guy, take him to the ground, ends up mounted on top of the guy, and at that point, you realize that Ben is kind of feeling that there's, some, there's a new sheriff in town. Anyways, he gives me his card and says, listen, I can help you a lot. Call me up next week. I said, wonderful. Thank you very much. And I leave. And the next week I call him up. Oh, Ben is busy. Can't talk right now. And then I call the following week. Oh, Ben is busy. Can't talk right now. Man, I never called him again. About a year later, I got a phone call from a producer. A guy claiming to see, say that he was doing a, a, a documentary about real fighting. And he understood that, you know, I would accept challenge matches. I said, absolutely. Who am I going to fight? He said, oh, Benny the Jet. I said, Benny the Jet? He said, yes. I said, what's the deal? He said, well, you have to put down $100,000 against his belt of world champion. And then we'll do three round, I mean, five rounds of three minutes. And if the fight falls on the ground, you can only stay on the ground for 60 seconds. I said, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. It's not a real fight. Here's what I think we should do. We'll make it three rounds of five minutes each. If the fight falls on the ground, it stays on the ground. As far as the $75,000, I mean the $100,000, I put $100,000, basically what you're telling me, that if I win, I get his belt. He said, but even if you lose, you got to pay $100,000, he said to me. I said, I'm hiring him to fight me for hundred grand. He said, yes. I said, that doesn't make sense either. 
Here's what I think we should do. I put down $100,000, and he puts down $75,000. And if we fight, and there's a draw, nobody wins, he takes my $100,000. Are you sure, he said. I said, 100%. I'll call you back tomorrow. Never heard from him again. 